dear sisters and brothers we have reached the fifth sunday of the season of easter you might wonder what is this first second third fourth fifth and how long this easter season is to be prolonged i just want to have a little calculation before we have this counting of the sundays in the acts of the apostles first chapter third verse when jesus was about to ascend into heaven after the resurrection luke the author of the book of the acts of the apostles registers a small note for us acts 13 after his suffering he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of god so jesus after his resurrection he was about 40 days with the disciples appearing to them confirming that he is alive and he preparing them for his ascension so 40 days now let's have the calculation we have completed four weeks which means 28 days of the season of easter therefore 12 more days are left that means nearly two weeks therefore we have just two more weeks this is fifth sunday one more sunday intervening sixth sunday after which on the seventh sunday we will be celebrating the ascension of the lord so this is the calculation my dear friends so we are almost at the end of this paschal journey we are going to complete the easter season within two weeks then after that the pentecost sunday which will give a winding up to the entire easter season paschal season that means we are just two more weeks to conclude before jesus goes and jesus in fact takes his disciples into a closed room until now the john's gospel has been our teacher these days and jesus was appearing here and there in jerusalem in in tiberias and last week jesus reveals himself as the good shepherd fine now it's time for him to be lifted up to the father so john beautifully arranges his gospel you know john is very unique of the four evangelists he has his own peculiar way of presenting jesus presenting the person of jesus the mystery of jesus the identity of jesus which the other three don't do that much directly they speak more about the kingdom that jesus wanted to establish matthew mark and luke but john will focus more and more specifically on the very person of jesus who jesus is that will be his main concern throughout the gospel now john has a beautiful layout in his gospel dear friends until the 12th chapter john speaks about jesus in the public life with the people now 13th chapter is a transition chapter now on from 13th chapter to five chapters 13 14 15 16 and 17 five chapters john keeps jesus inside the room of the last supper and jesus conversing with his disciples about his departure and jesus prepares them for that departure and therefore he gives his farewell discourse the five chapters beautifully arranged 12 13 12 14 15 16 and 17 dear friends among these five chapters there is another internal arrangement 13 and 14 will speak of jesus last desire jesus was about to leave and he expresses his last desire to his loved ones i think it carries the message to his dear ones that you and i are even after 2000 years what this jesus expects of us what is jesus inner longing inner desire from his disciples you know the last moments of any person 
is very important as you know so we would like to be with the person at the last moments and give the best to him or to her and also to receive the best from him or from her that's what we do and jesus does the same the same psychological play he does in those five chapters 13 and 14 he expresses his inner heart what his heart is throbbing for and 15 and 16 the next two chapters which will be our next week's concern his last gift that he wants to give us and 17th chapter the culmination will be a, an overall beautiful comprehensive prayer of jesus 17th chapter it is called the solemn priestly prayer of jesus jesus prays for those whom he has to leave abandon and go and he prays not only for the disciples who are there but also for those whom he, they will be making disciples that is you and i jesus already prayed in the 17th chapter father i am not here they are in the world please take care of them he is pleading the father for those who will be behind him in this world a beautiful arrangement dear friends with this background we come to today's gospel which is from the 13th chapter beginning in john john begins this 13th chapter in this way he says when judas had gone out this is very very significant dear friends for john perhaps john takes care to see that judas is out that means it's a very very crucial moment a very very sensitive moment a very very emotional moment for jesus last moments in fact you must know this happened before his passion but you know gospels were written after his resurrection and ascension please note this is very important for our faith understanding the gospels were written after his ascension and therefore they recall what happened before there were no scripts there were no stenographers personal secretaries taking note of today what tomorrow what but they recollected what all jesus did right from second chapter cana now we come to the 13th chapter what happened on the last supper so whatever jesus said and did before his passion can be translated can be translated to the time before his ascension that's the beauty of it before jesus leaves us because these words he spoke to the apostles before he left them to the cross so that is how we need to understand these gospel writings dear friends now we come to the 13th chapter john is very keen to keep judas out why you know he says that in the 13th chapter just before beginning this 31st verse he is going to speak something very personal about him judas will be an odd man for that message because judas was possessed by money judas was totally possessed by the grip of money when jesus said go do quickly what you are going to do the other disciples misunderstood what jesus said jesus knew what judas is to do go and do it quickly but it is said that now no one at the table knew what he said why he said this to him some thought that because judas had the common purse money jesus was telling him buy what we need for the festival passover or could be that he should give something to the poor because he is a bursar is the treasurer so they thought he was having the money purse so after receiving the piece of the bread he immediately went out and it was night for john this is a beautiful way of giving the message he went out finished but he says it is night you know for john night is the time of the evil one the devil so he has entered into the realm of the evil one he has come under the grip of the evil one dear friends this is an alert for us this is a caution for us he may receive the bread the eucharist in one hand i may get into the dark the devil the night on the other hand both can happen 
it can happen to us also inside the church we receive the bread and we outside we go into the night possible that's also another danger now john sees that judas is out because jesus is going to do something very very extraordinary very personal and therefore judas is a misfit for it and is removed him from there when judas had gone out from the upper room jesus speaks he opens his mouth and very very touching words of jesus is last words now is the son of man glorified and god is glorified him i'm going to be glorified before it is the cross on the cross he was lifted up glorified now before the ascension in the ascension is glorified to the father now i am glorified and in my glorification father is glorified god is glorified if god is glorified in me god will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once he said just a comprehensive nutshell of his life's journey i have glorified the father father will glorify me finished now little children and this is a beautiful address my friends very favorite address of john john will use the same address in his letters we have three more letters written by john it is said first second and third letters of john and those letters the collection is called you must know catholic letters we have pauline letters 13 letters of saint paul then we have the catholic letters they are called catholic letters written by peter letter written by jude letters written by john letter written by james these letters are called collectively catholic epistles why catholic you know should know the meaning because you say you are a catholic catholic means it's not a sect it's not a group catholic the word catholic means universal it includes everyone that's the beauty of my mother church catholic church it is a mother who can enfold everybody into her embrace the church is open is exten- extensive and is inclusive that's the beauty of catholic my friends now there are catholic epistles i because they are written for all people those letters are applicable for all people they are called catholic epistles in them three of them are by john the same john and john is fond of this expression little children that is jesus fondly addressing his apostles now this is as i told you very emotional moment jesus is about to leave them and therefore he very endearingly addresses them little children then he says little children yet a little while i am with you then you will not see me that means he is definite of his going his departure is sure now he expresses his inner desire my friends this is his last will we are all familiar with this last will last testament the person can change his will i can write a will we priests are supposed to write our will keep it in an enclosed closed uh, uh, cover envelope and leave it in the chancery of the diocese or the priest because only when we are no more they will open it and see what is our desire what is our settlement so all of us are supposed to make our will and the will can always be changed as long as you are alive the last will is the last after which you don't change that is called the last testament of the person jesus is writing his last testament here in the upper room with his 11 apostles now usually you know my friends the will will always refer to some bequeathing some inheritance of wealth it could be money movable or immovable properties anything so you leave the wealth to your dear ones next generation that is the will but my lord jesus left what what was his wealth that is bequeathing to you and me to the generations it is not silver or gold 
that is why you remember in the acts of the apostles third chapter soon after the pentecost event peter and john are going to the temple to pray at three o'clock in the noon as the jews do and at that time there was a crippled man laid in the portico and he looks up to them to get some arms from them and they said look and he was so eager to that you'll get something he said silver nor gold we have but what we have we give you we give you in the name of jesus of nazareth so they possess jesus so jesus is the wealth so jesus is going to write the will which wealth today that is the concern that is our focal point today for our reflection prayer dear friends jesus writes in his will this a new commandment i give to you so the will for you and for me dear friends this is a very very challenging lesson and a challenging task for us a new commandment i give to you that you love one another love one another love is a very common token all over the world everybody loves to speak about love love is a very common theme dear friends and we have here jesus saying a new commandment jesus love is a old commandment from the beginning of humanity people have been loving and what is the newness of your new commandment that's what we ask the lord in his last testament dear friends in the old testament itself in the book of leviticus 1918 it's very clearly laid down you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself so you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself we need a measure a scale a tape to know how much i should love yes the best measure is that how much you love yourself you love your neighbor in fact dear friends as you know this is leviticus 1918 it is called in the universal um, world all over the world in the history human history it is called the golden rule the golden rule as much as you love yourself love your neighbor that means whatever i want me to have good health wish that the other may have good life good name take care of the reputation of the other name don't spoil anybody's name you need a very comfortable life see that others have a comfortable life you want to have happiness see that others also have happiness you don't want to be hurt see that others are not hurt this is a beautiful this is a golden rule it is called in the history of humanity this is not only in the bible to love the other as yourself we have before jesus six centuries before jesus the famous philosopher from china chinese philosopher confucius his philosophy is very prevalent in all of asia because from china before christ his teaching was love your neighbor as yourself after that we have greek philosophers of the 5th century we have socrates followed by aristotle then next century plato all these greek philosophers speak about this golden rule love your neighbor as yourself so this is nothing new that is why i i very interestingly read again john as i told you one of his letters john's letters he reads in the first letter of john first chapter seventh verse very interesting dear friends he says first letter of john we have in his second chapter seventh verse he says beloved i am writing you no new commandment first john 2 7 i am writing to you no new commandment but an old commandment that you have had from the beginning it's a old commandment then the next verse immediately john says very interesting a sort of uh, irony he says the old commandment is the word that you have heard yet eighth verse yet i am writing you a new commandment that is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining so there is an old commandment love your neighbor as yourself but there is a new commandment also and that is what my lord jesus leaves as is earning his desire with his disciples as he is about to departure he says 
now we have to explore what is the newness of the new commandment what is the uniqueness of the new commandment and the new commandment is this jesus says just as i have loved you you also ought to love one another the golden rule is love your neighbor as yourself but the new commandment the newness of the new commandment the uniqueness of jesus commandment is that as much as i have loved you you loved so the measure is now the scale is changed the reference is changed no more as i love myself but as jesus loved me i need to love my neighbor this is his only desire dear friends as he is about to depart from us a very very challenging expectation of my lord jesus from you and from me how to love like jesus loved he himself will say in john 15 chapter 8th verse there is no greater love than this to lay down one's life for his friends and he did it on the cross and i am to love that way dear friends love 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 is something that we speak a lot in christianity you take our our him book and see turn the pages how many songs are on love today you are singing communion how many songs on love you'll see that there are so many things so many songs on love but the love i tell you the whole bible could be summarized in one word just one word not one sentence the whole bible can be summarized in one word it is love because the whole story of the bible is a love story in john 3:16 which is called good news within the good news gospel within the good news gospel within the gospel john 3:16 god so loved the world so loved the world that he gave his only son that those who believe in him may have life that was god's love and life because he loved he want to give life and therefore he sent his only son to the world in romans 5 chapter 8 verse a stunning verse a stunning articulation by paul romans 5 8 someone will do good thing for a good person he is a good man let's do this but no one will do a good thing for a bad fellow but he says while we are yet sinners while we were yet sinners christ gave his life for us by this he proved god's love for us while we were sinners he died for us so the whole story of the bible is the love story of god that is why in the 13th chapter as i told you the farewell discourse thus begins 13th chapter john beautifully begins this last supper now before the festival of the passover jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the father so what happens he knows that he is going to go having loved his own you and my me brothers having loved his own who were in the world he loved them to the end is to the end i i i just admire difference to the end means what not only to the end of his time to the last which could be his expression of his love that's why he went to the cross he loved them to the end there cannot be more than that an expression of love so he loved them to the end so jesus as jesus loved i am called to love that is the newness of the new commandment jesus jesus gives to his disciples in the upper room and today in this ground floor to you and to me dear friends the newness the uniqueness of is it possible jesus why jesus was so keen to give this testament this will to us i think for two reasons one is that jesus knew that he was going to be absent dear friends just reflect with me please Jesus knew that he was going to be absent in the world and therefore it is necessary to make him present in the world how to make a person who is absent to be present in the world that is the witnessing role of his disciples how jesus lives jesus lives no the way that you love one another as he has loved people will know 
here is Christ alive in this world, in this person. That is why you and I are called to be his disciples, Christians, named after Christ, who continues his love in this world. Therefore, Jesus knew that he is going to be absent and he wants his absence to be made present by his disciples by continuing his attitude, his heart of love in this world, dear friends. This is first thing. Second thing, Jesus also at this last moment, as I told you, it's very emotionally charged moment, a very sentimental moment before Jesus leaves. He would have felt, I have done so much to express my love, God's Father's love to the world and that should not go a waste. Just think, all the cross, all his sufferings, all his wounds be reflected during the season of Lent and all that, that should not go a waste. Therefore, that love has to be sustained in this world and made present in the world, should be continued in this world only through you and me. Therefore, I need to be continued. I need to be made present and what I have done and what I have given should be continued in this world only by you and me. Dear friends, a big task, a big expectation in the willpower of Jesus, a very challenging thing. But also I see the newness. Why this is a new commandment, as I tell you? Because it's the time of the Spirit, Holy Spirit. We live after the Pentecost. Jesus lived before the Pentecost. Now we are a Spirit-led community. The Spirit-led community rises above human considerations. The human considerations will be he, she, there, that, what she has, what he does, what he he is called where he comes from. All are human consideration, human biodatas, human requirements. But the Spirit's requirements is that we are brothers and sisters of one God the Father in Jesus. And therefore, a spiritual outlook, a spiritual approach, a spiritual perspective is expected of the disciples of the Pentecost. Therefore, we need to be led by the Spirit where no human considerations divide us. And thirdly, dear friends, Jesus, why he gives a new commandment to the new community? Because he wants to establish a new society in this world, a new counterculture to the society's culture. Today's culture is materialism, consumerism, hedonism, use and throw culture. The mad race, who is first? Jungle theory. If you are a mite, you are right. This is jungle theory. But in this culture, Jesus wants to establish a new society. What is that new society? The kingdom society. So in that kingdom society, only one rule that can speak and that can reign, that can rule, that can guide is love. Therefore, Jesus wants to create a new kingdom community and therefore gives a new law, a new constitution as we have our own country's constitution. He gives the constitution of the kingdom. The constitution doesn't run to pages. It just has one word, love. And another expression, love as I have loved you. This only constitution of the new king. That's why in the second reading we have, in the, from the book of Revelation, John has a vision, a beautiful vision. You know, first book of the scripture, first chapter, first verse. What is that? First verse of the first book. In the beginning God created heaven and earth. You know what is the last book, book of Revelation, last chapter 21 and 22? The first verse, I John saw a new heaven and a new earth. What happened? For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. We have been repeatedly saying dear friends, the sea, in the, in the Bible, wherever water body is mentioned, the sea, it is the dwelling place of the evil one, according to the Jewish thinking. The devil lives in the waters. Therefore, whatever water event is mentioned, it will be chaos. It will be a destruction. You can see in all the events. We have already many, many times we are reflected over that. Therefore, there will be no sea in the new heaven and the new earth. In the old heaven, the first heaven, the first God created water bodies. But here there will be no sea because no devil. That is why Judas is removed into the dark. When Jesus was giving the new commandment, you see that. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. And one who was seated on the throne, God the Father was saying, 
Behold, I am making all things new. He says, I am making everything new. Therefore, a new commandment that, that the Lord Jesus gives to us. Dear friends, today we need to ask ourselves, it is easy to speak about love for me also from this pulpit, but to relive that love is a real challenge. We have one place in the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, 13th chapter is a love poem. 1 Corinthians 13th chapter is a love poem. He gives various aspects, dimensions of love just for our review of life. We will take a few minutes, one or two minutes to review our life. Am I, am I a disciple of Jesus who makes this love the last will of Jesus a reality in my life? A small examination of conscience 1 Corinthians 13th chapter, 4th verse, the whole chapter, a short chapter, 13 verses, 13th chapter, all on love. I just take a few punctuations. Love is patient. Am I patient in my life with those who live with me, husband and wife, parents and children, my friends, neighbors in the office, my co-travelers in the bus, the train, the children in the school? Love is patient. To what extent? Am I? Because I burst like a balloon, I burst anger, hurt feelings, hurt, hurting words. Love is kind. Am I kind? To go into the hearts of the people, the sentiments of the people, understand what is happening in other people. Am I kind to those who are around me? Love is not envious, jealous. Why you are jealous? You thank God for all the blessings that you are received but you are not ready to thank for the blessings the other one has received. So, your unaccepted nature of his blessing is your jealousy. So, love is not envious, jealous. Love is not boastful. I, I, myself alone, the first, nobody else. I and I alone, boastful, or arrogant, or rude. Am I? How I react to things in my relation, life of relationship, am I reacting or am I giving response? You know, reaction is destructive. You react in the same measure as the other person acted. Response is from the fullness of heart, from the spiritual realm. So, it does not insist on its own way, only what I say. No. It is not irritable. You don't get irritated if you are really loving. Are you irritated? Irritable? It is not resentful. You hate people. You keep people away from your circle. You don't want to see them. You don't want to be bothered about them. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing. If something happens wrong to others, do I wish that to happen? But rejoices in the truth. It bears all things. Love bears all things. It can endure all things. There's a beautiful adage, you know that, what cannot be cured has to be endured. I always say to myself, many things we cannot cure in life, you have to endure. So many people, you cannot be changing people, but we need to live with them, accept them as they are. That's what important. So it bears all things, believes all things. We need to trust people. Basic trust we need to have in human persons. Don't categorize them that are useless. They are gone cases. They are finished. They are bad. Don't brand anybody. There is basic goodness in everybody. So. It believes in all things, it hopes in all things, it endures all things. Beautiful expressions of love, a small. This is what Jesus is saying, can you do as I did? Dear friends, today's farewell discourse concludes with the 13th chapter, 35th verse, a verse that I often quote in my reflections. 13th chapter, 35th verse, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. A shocking statement for me. I searched in the whole Bible, you can do that my friends. Is there anywhere Jesus has given any credential, any token to show that he is, you are his disciples? Sorry, no uniform, no Catholic uniform. Even Sunday obligation, Jesus never mentioned in the Bible. Your adorations or your Devotions, your novenas, 
never mentioned the whole bible only place 13th chapter 35th verse where jesus has clearly given this is the only token that you are my disciple what is that if you love one another you will be my disciples you will be my continuations today let's ask the lord lord thank you for your farewell discourse it's very pinning and also paining for us it is very challenging for us to love as you loved in my own home circle in my social larger circle it's very challenging but give me the grace the power and the strength of your spirit the risen spirit that i will be your continuation that i will make present you who are absent amidst us by my way of love by living the new commandment and creating the new society the kingdom society